This lecture is about uh, a specific technique for contextual text mining called a contextual probabilistic latent semantic analysis. In this lecture, we're going to continue discussing contextual text mining and we're going to introduce contextual probabilistic latent semantic analysis as extension of PLSA for uh, doing contextual text mining. Recall that uh, in contextual text mining, we hope to analyze topics in text uh, in consideration of context so that we can associate the topics with uh, appropriate context that we're interested in. So in this approach, uh, contextual probabilistic latent uh, semantic analysis or CPLSA, the main idea is to explicitly add interesting context variables into a generative model. Uh, recall that before when we generate the text, we generally assume we'll, we'll start with some topics and then sample words from some topics. But here we're going to uh, add context variables so that uh, the uh, coverage of topics and also the content of topics will be tied to context. Or in other words, we're going to let the context influence both the coverage and the content of a topic. The consequence is that this would enable us to discover contextualized topics, make the topics more uh, interesting, more meaningful, uh, because we can then have topics that can be interpreted as specific to a particular context that we're interested in, for example, a particular time period. As extension of PLSA model, uh, CPLSA uh, mainly uh, does uh, the following changes. Firstly, it would model the conditional likelihood of text given context. Uh, that clearly suggests that the generation of text would then depend on context and that allows us to bring in context into the generative model. Secondly, uh, it makes uh, two specific assumptions about the dependency of topics on context. Uh, one is to assume that the, depending on the context, depending on different time periods or different locations, we assume that there are different views of a topic or different versions of word distributions that characterize a topic. And this assumption allows us to discover different variations of the same topic in different contexts. The other is that we assume the topic coverage also depends on the context. And that means depending on the time or location, we might cover topics differently. And then again, this dependency uh, would then allow us to capture the association of topics uh, with specific context. We can still use the EM algorithm to solve the uh, problem of parameter estimation. And in this case, the estimate parameters would naturally uh, contain context variables. And in particular, a lot of conditional probabilities of topics uh, given certain context and this would allow us to do contextual text mining. So this is the basic idea. Now, um, we don't have time to introduce this model in detail, but there are references here that you can look into to know more detail. Uh, here I just uh, I want to um, explain the high level ideas uh, in more detail, particularly we're gonna explain the generation process of text data that has context associated in such a model. So as you see here, we can assume there are still multiple topics. For example, um, some topics might represent the themes like a government response, donation, or the city of New Orleans. Now this example is in the context of Hurricane Katrina and that hit uh, New Orleans. Now as you can see, we assume uh, there are different uh, views associated with the each of the topics and these are um, shown as view one view two or v3 and each view is a different version of word distributions and these views are tied to some context variables for example tied to the location taxes or the time july 2005 or the occupation of the author being sociologist now, on the right side, you see, uh, now we assume the document has context information. So the time is known to be uh, July 2005, locations, Texas, etc. 
Now, such context information is what we hope to model as well. So we're not going to just model the text. And so one idea here is to model the variations of top topic content in different contexts. And this gives us different views of the word distributions. Now on the bottom, you will see the theme coverage or topic coverage might also vary according to these contexts. Uh, because in the, uh, in the case of a location like Texas, people might want to cover the red topics more. That's a new audience as visualized here. But in, uh, in a certain time period, maybe uh, a particular topic like donation uh, will be covered more. So this variation is also uh, considered in CPISA. So to generate such a document with context, we first also choose a view. And this view, of course, now could be uh, from any of these contexts. Let's say we have taken this view that depends on the time in the middle. So now we will have a specific version of word distributions. Now you can see some probabilities of words for each topic. Now once we have chosen a view, now the situation will be very similar to what happened in standard PLSA. We assume we have got a word distribution associated with each topic, right? And then next we also choose a coverage from the bottom. So we're going to choose a particular coverage um, and that coverage uh, before is fixed in PISA and it's tied to a particular document. Each document has just one coverage distribution. Now here, because we consider context, so the distribution of topics or the coverage of topics can vary depending on the context that has influenced the coverage. So for example, we might pick a particular coverage. Let's say in this case, uh, we pick a We've picked a document specific coverage. Now with the coverage and these word distributions, we can generate the document in exactly the same way as in PLSA. So what it means, we're going to use the coverage to uh, choose a topic, to choose one of these three topics. Let's say we have picked, uh, um, let's say the yellow topic, then we'll draw a word from uh, this particular topic on the top. So we might get a word like a government. And then next time we might choose a different topic and we'll get the donate, etc. Right? Until we generate all the words. And this is basically the same process as in PISA. Now, so the main difference is when we obtain the coverage and the word distributions, we let the context influence our choice. So in other words, we have extra switches that are tied to this context that would control the choices of different views of topics and the choices of coverage. And naturally, the model will have more parameters to estimate. But once we can estimate those parameters that involve the context, then we will be able to understand the context-specific views of topics or context-specific coverages of topics. And this is precisely what we want in contextual text mining. So here are some sample results um, from using such a model, not necessarily exactly the same model, but uh, similar models. So on this slide, you see some sample results of comparing news articles about Iraq war and Afghanistan war. Now we have about 30 articles um, on Iraq war and 26 articles on Afghanistan war. Now in this case, the goal is to, uh, to review the common topics covered in both sets of articles and the differences or variations of the topic in each of the two collections. So in this case, the context is explicitly specified by the topic or collection. And we see the results here show that uh, there is a common theme um, that's corresponding to cluster one here in this column. And that uh, there is a common theme indicating that the United Nations is involved in both wars. It's a common topic covered in both sets of articles. And that's indicated by the high probability words shown here, United Nations. Now, if you know the background, of course, this is not uh, surprising. And this, um, it's, this topic is indeed very relevant to both wars. If you look at the column further, and then what's interesting is that the next two cells of word distributions 
actually tell us uh, collection specific variations of the topic of United Nations. So it indicates that in Iraq war, United Nations was more involved in weapon inspections, whereas in Afghanistan war, it was more involved in uh, maybe aid to Northern Alliance. It's a different uh, variation of the topic of United Nations. So this shows that by bringing the context, in this case, different wars or different collections of text, we can have topical variations tied to this context to review the differences of coverage of United Nations in the two wars. Now, similarly, if you look at the second cluster, class two, it has to do with the killing of people. And again, it's not surprising if you know the background about wars or the wars involve killing of people. Uh, but imagine if you are, the, you are not familiar with the text collections, or you have a lot of text articles, and such a technique can review the common topics covered in both sets of articles. It can be used to review common topics in multiple sets of articles as well. Now, if you look at down, of course, in that uh, column of cluster two, you see variations of uh, killing of people, and that correspond to in different, uh, different contexts. And here is another example of results um, obtained from blog articles about the Hurricane Katrina. Now, in this case, what you see here uh, is visualization of the trends of topics over time. And the, the top one shows just uh, the uh, temporal trends of two topics. One is oil price and one is uh, about the flooding of the city, New Orleans. Now, uh, uh, these topics are um, obtained from blog articles about the Hurricane Katrina. And people talked about these topics, and in addition to some other topics. But the visualization shows that uh, with this technique, we can have conditional distribution of time given a topic. So this allows us to plot uh, this conditional probability to generate curves like what you're seeing here. We see that initially the two curves tracked each other very well. But later, uh, we see the topic of New Orleans was mentioned um, again, but oil price was not. And this turns out to be uh, the time period when another hurricane, uh, Hurricane Rita, hit the region. And that apparently triggered more discussion about the flooding of the city. Uh, the bottom uh, curve shows the coverage of this topic about the flooding of the city uh, by blog articles in different locations. And it also shows some shift of um, coverage that might be related to uh, people's uh, migrating from uh, the uh, state of Louisiana to uh, Texas, for example. So in this case, we can see uh, the time can be used as context to review trends of topics. This is uh, some additional result uh, on spatial patterns. And this, in this case, it's about the topic of government response. And there was some criticism about the slow response of government in the case of Hurricane Katrina. And the discussion now is covered in different uh, locations. And these visualizations show uh, the coverage in different weeks of the event. And initially, it's covered mostly in the victim states in the south. But then gradually, it's spread into other um, locations. But in week four, which is shown on the bottom uh, on the left, uh, we see a pattern that's very similar to the very first week on the top left. And that's when, again, uh, Hurricane Rita hit the region. So such a technique would allow us to use location as context to examine variations of topics. And of course, the model is completely general, so you can apply this to any other collections of text uh, to review spatial temporal patterns. Here's yet an another application of this kind of model, where we look at the, mm, the use of the model for event impact analysis. So here we're looking at the research articles in information retrieval, or IR particularly SIG IR papers. And the topic we are focused on uh, is about the retrieval models. And you can see the top word, uh, top words with high probabilities about this model on the left. And then uh, we hope to examine the impact of two events. One is the start of track, 
for tax retrieval conference. This is a major evaluation effort uh, sponsored by U.S. government, and it was launched in 1992 or around that time. And that ha is known to have made an impact on uh, the topics of research information retrieval. The other is the publication of a seminal paper uh, by Croft and Pont. And this is about the language modeling approach to information retrieval. It's also known to have made a high impact on information retrieval research. So we hope to use this kind of model to understand impact. And the idea here is simply to use the time um, as context and use these events to divide the time periods into a period before the event and another after this event. And then we can compare the differences of the topics, the coverage and the variations, etc. So in this case, the results show, have shown that before a track, uh, the study of retrieval models was mostly a vector space model, Boolean model, etc. But the after track, uh, apparently the study of retrieval models have involved a lot of other words that seem to suggest some different retrieval tasks though. Uh, so for example, email was used in the enterprise search tasks and subtopic retrieval was another task introduced later by track. On the bottom, we see the variations that are uh, correlated with the publication of the language model paper. Probabilistic model, 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 etc. But after, uh, we have those classical probabilistic model, logic model, Boolean model, etc. But after 1998, we see a clear uh, dominance of language model as probabilistic models. And we see words like language model, estimation of parameter, etc. So this uh, technique here can use event as context to understand the impact of the event. Again, the technique is, is general, so you can use this to analyze the impact of any event. Here are some uh, suggested readings. Uh, the first is a paper about the simple extension of PLSA to enable cross-collection comparison. And it's to perform comparative text mining to allow us to extract common topics shared by multiple collections and their variations in each collection. The second one is uh, the main paper about the CPISA model uh, with a discussion of a lot of applications. The third one has a lot of details about the special temporal patterns uh, for the Hurricane Katrina example.